All right, welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're going to dive into something, well, pretty profound. It's a new framework for understanding reality itself, and it comes from a speculative model known as the totality. You know, we all have this feeling, right? It's almost baked into us from the moment we're born. This sense that life is a one-way street, a straight line that goes from birth to death, a journey with a definite end. But what if that entire story, that feeling of a one-way trip, is just a massive misunderstanding? What if that fear of an end we all have is really just a failure of perspective? I mean, that's the big question the source material is asking us to think about. And this gets us to a real crack in our understanding of reality. See, there's this massive disconnect between how the universe feels to us day to day and what physics tells us it might actually be. So on the one hand, you've got our experience, right? Time feels like a river, it's always flowing forward, the past is gone, the future isn't written yet. But then you've got physics, specifically one interpretation of relativity, which gives us something called the block universe. And in that model, the past, the present, and the future, they all exist right now simultaneously. The whole timeline is just there. So how in the world do you square that circle? How do you connect those two completely different ideas? Well, to try and bridge that gap, we're going to look at this framework called the totality. And I want to be clear, this isn't being presented as scientific fact. Think of it more like a conceptual toolkit, a set of tools to help us look at things in a totally new way. Yeah, the goal here is pretty ambitious. It's trying to build a bridge between the incredibly weird world of physics and our own subjective conscious experience. The goal is to make it all fit into one single coherent story. All right, so let's get into it. Let's open up this toolkit and see what's inside. We're going to explore three really powerful analogies from the source material. Think of them like mental levers that'll help us pry open our perspective. And the source material has this fantastic way of describing them. It says, these tools are designed to help us climb out of the cage of our own limited perspective. You know, they're meant to give us a peek at a reality that our senses, well, they just weren't built to see. Okay, first up tool number one. This is a classic thought experiment, a real oldie but a goodie, called the flatland analogy. And it's absolutely brilliant for helping us imagine what higher dimensions might be like. So I want you to imagine a world that's perfectly flat, like literally a sheet of paper, and on this paper live 2D beings, squares, circles, triangles. They can move left and right, forward and back, but they have zero concept of up or down. Their entire reality is just that flat plane. Now, here's where it gets interesting. What happens if a 3D object, say a simple sphere, passes through their 2D world? Well, the Flatlanders wouldn't see a sphere, right? What they'd see is a single point just appearing out of thin air. Then that point would grow into a circle, get bigger and bigger, then shrink back down to a point, and poof, gone. To them, it would look like some kind of magic, something totally impossible. And here is the absolute key takeaway. The weirdness wasn't in the sphere itself. The sphere is a simple, normal object. The weirdness was entirely in the limited perspective of the Flatlanders. So the analogy asks, what if the paradox is in our world, things like quantum weirdness or the mystery of time? What if they're not actually paradoxes at all? What if they're just the shadows of a higher, simpler reality that we can't see directly? Okay, hold that thought about shadows and perspective. Let's grab our second tool from the kit. We're going to switch gears a little bit here, from physics to philosophy, with a really famous ancient puzzle that gets right to the heart of what it means to be, well, a thing. And the question is, so simple, yet it's so deep. If you take every single part of the ship and replace it one plank at a time until nothing original is left, is it still the same ship? And this isn't just about ships, right? This forces us to think about our own identity. I mean, the cells in your body are constantly being replaced. Are you, physically, the same person you were a decade ago? What makes you, you? And that question leads us perfectly into our third and final tool, which is maybe the most fundamental one of all. It's about a choice. A choice about what reality is actually made of at the deepest level. Is it made of things? You know, particles, bits of information? Or... Is reality made of the connections, the relationships between things? In other words, what comes first, the stuff or the web that connects the stuff? Well, the totality framework makes a very clear choice here. It goes all in on the second option, the relational view. So in this model, the universe isn't just a box full of stuff. It's a single, vast, interconnected web. And all the things we see, you, me, a planet, an atom, they aren't really separate objects. They're just stable patterns, like knots or nodes in that gigantic web. 
Okay, so now we have our three tools, the idea of higher dimensions from Flatland, the question of identity from the ship of Theseus, and this idea of a relational web. Let's put them all together now and go back and solve that ship paradox. So, the solution to the puzzle? It's that the shipness of the ship of Theseus was never in the wood itself. It was in the pattern, the structure, the form, the arrangement of all those planks. That's what stays the same even when all the material flowing through it changes. And here's the leap. This applies directly to us. You are not the atoms in your body. You are the incredibly complex continuous pattern that those atoms create over time. You're more like a wave in the ocean than a bucket of water. The water is always changing, but the wave? The wave holds its form. Okay, so if you can make that mental shift from thinking of yourself as a temporary clump of stuff to a persistent pattern, then you're ready for the final and honestly most mind-bending conclusion of this entire framework. Let's put all the pieces on the table. One. The block universe idea suggests all of time exists at once as a single geometric object. Two, you are not your physical stuff. You are a pattern that persists through time. So if you put those together, what do you get? It means your entire life from beginning to end is one complete permanent pattern, an unchanging shape etched into the four-dimensional geometry of space-time. So from that higher dimensional perspective, what we call an end or death, it isn't you being erased. It's just the boundary of your pattern. It's the edge of your shape in space-time. The concept of an end is just an illusion of our limited perspective. It's just like the flatlander thinking the sphere vanishes, when really it just finished passing through their plane. And so, this whole framework leaves us with one final, pretty staggering thought to chew on. If you are a permanent pattern in a timeless whole, if your entire life is an eternal feature of reality, then what does it even mean to end? 